double di uh, recession is mainly uh, linked to the problems that prevail in the financial sector and the financial sector resolution. Malaysia, like the other Asian economies, are not facing a financial sector crisis. Our financial sector is solid and sound. Things are getting better. I mean, even on the ground, you can actually see anecdotal evidence where private consumption has actually started to improve. Housing sales, for example, has started to pick up, and, uh, and generally the results from Malaysia has been pretty much in line. Um, it shows that it does have a base for, um, for some growth uh, later on uh, this year or even 2010. Now, optimism about Malaysia's economy being supported by the country's central bank governor, you heard from her slightly earlier. That's despite Malaysia's back-to-back -back GDP declines, which puts it into a technical recession for the first time in 10 years. Second quarter GDP fell 3.9 percent on persistent weakness in exports. However, the slump was still less than economists had it forecast. The expectation is, therefore, for growth to improve in the second half of this year and going into 2010 uh, with the accelerated implementation of the fiscal stimulus measures, the lower rate of inflation and the continued access to financing, uh, we uh, expect uh, all these uh, to provide continued support for the economic recovery. Now, it remains to be seen whether the markets will share that optimism. Malaysian stocks have gained 34 percent this year, which, as you can see, makes them the worst performers in Southeast Asia. Now, let's take stock of Malaysian stocks with... Who else? Raymond Tang, who oversees close to $6 billion in assets at CIMB Principal Asset Management. He joins us from Kuala Lumpur. Raymond, it's always good to have you with us. I mean, we saw that 30% gain, but Malaysian stocks are still lagging behind their peers in Asia. Do you expect that to continue going forward? Well, I expect that to continue. If you look at a perspective from uh, your 30% the gain this year to date, uh, last year, we also fell the least, so about 30 percent, so we are deemed a lower volatility market. If you look at the other extreme, we had China, which fell 70 percent last year, and after a year to date, they've recovered half of their, half of their uh, losses. So it, it it's becomes a measure of statistical basis. Uh, I would like to look at it from a peak to trial, let's say from the peak before the crash up to now at this point. If you look at that perspective, Malaysia is the second best performer up to July last month, uh, better than even the developed markets, better than even China. So we have basically, we have let, we have uh, outperformed the way down, underperformed the way up, but that's to be expected because Malaysia is still deemed a low beta market. But Raymond, what do we do in this type of environment? What are the best bets now in Malaysia? Well, the best bets, I think, are still all these big sector bets. Uh, we are still bullish on banking. I think that the uh, expectations of higher NPLs uh, and uh, much lower loan growth uh, did not pan out. So we did not expect that to happen. We expected the credit uh, control to be very tight among other banks. The banks are still very conservative. And none of the Malaysian banks had any investments in any of the uh, CDOs, uh, CLOs. So there was nothing to basically write off on the balance sheet. So we are still positive on banks in that sense. Um, the other sectors that we are basically also positive on is infrastructure, construction, and uh, oil and gas, where the thrust of the, the next wave of the government spending will focus on. And in terms of banks, I'm looking at the best performers. CIMB and AMMB have outperformed. And other performers on the KLCI include MMC and Guntik. I know you can't talk about specific stocks, but when you take a look at all these big gainers, have they are gains overdone? I would think that uh, it was overdone on the downside. Uh, so that it's basically at least what you call a mean reversion type of trade. And if you see that uh, among all of these, uh, the, a lot of this, the... The main trait of uh, a lot of them are, is a lot of them are, have basically gone beyond Malaysian shores and have uh, basically regional uh, operations. So you are buying into a Malaysian-listed 
entity, but basically the operations are gradually growing into offshore. If you think, for example, Genting, I mean, the much hyped uh, IR resorts in uh, Singapore. So those are one of the examples we've seen Malaysian companies going uh, diversifying. So we think, we do not think that the, the rebound this round is overdone. Raymond, I'm going to bring in Luca at this point in time. Of course, Luca is our guest host for Asia Confidential today. Luca, go ahead. Yes, I have a question for Raymond. Uh, hi, Raymond. Uh, hi. What do you think of, of, of uh, the export sector? Because I think one of the big bets in the next uh, 12 months, as far as market is concerned, is how uh, our trade, our international trade, will recover if it recovers to the level 2007 or 2005 or 2003. So how, what's your take on, on, on the export sector? Well, the export sector for Malaysia is basically divided into mainly two different segments. If you look at the resource side, we have CPO, crude oil. I think that should continue to do well. Prices there are relatively firmer and less volatile, and it's basically driven by global demand. Uh, of a, a bit more concern will be your, your basically your E and E exports, your electronics, which are basically your semi-finished goods, which are shipped over to other production centers to be assembled in the final products. So that will be dependent mainly on the consumption recovery uh, globally, not in the U.S. but also in the Asia as well, because we are feeding components into all the finished goods, be it the LCD TV or washing machine or aircon. Um, typically, we are part of that global supply chain. I think that that would uh, have a bit more of a struggle recovering as uh, consumers start uh, cut back on a big item spending, but still focus on the staples instead of discretionary spending. Raymond, just one final question before we go to break. How much opportunities do you see in GLCs, the likes of Maybank, Telecom Malaysia, Malaysian Airlines? The government has been doing a lot to restructure these companies. Well, I think that uh, if you talk about this uh, banks per se, um, there are opportunities there. If you look for it, you're just investing to make positive returns. However, as a uh, regional fund manager, if you benchmark uh, Malaysian banks against all their regional banks, you, if you look at them from a gross prospect and from an earnings growth perspective, uh, Malaysian banks do not stand out among the top picks in the region. Right, because of the uh, lower growth, in, lower trajectory in loan growth compared to say a uh, the newest kid in the block, Indonesia, which are doing double digit uh, growth. So right. from that from that perspective, I would would think that yes, we are going to achieve positive returns, uh, but on the relative Raymond? performance, we are not, yes. We'll pick up a discussion right after this break. Raymond Tang joining us from uh, CIMB. Off for a short break. Let's stay with Malaysia. Back to our chat with Raymond Tang, Chief Investment Officer at CIMB Principal in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, we were talking about uh, GLCs slightly uh, earlier, Raymond. Um, has there been much interest from uh, foreign funds in these companies? I think there are a fair number of interests. Uh, uh, but uh, the interest here, I would think that is less than we've seen in the prior years. Uh, because if you look at it on a sector basis, uh, you have this, you can get the same sectors anywhere in the region, so you have to look for it for a main trust on the business plan perspective. What are you doing? Um, have you survived the, uh, the risk management crisis the last two years? Has your management style been very robust in this environment? Is it the correct style going forward? Is your business plan correct? I mean, a lot of a lot of if we talk about banks as a representative of the GLCs all invest in. I think that a lot of them has basically have a myriad of report, report carding over the, over the region. So your best upside is uh, typically from your worst banks because they've been best down on the worst. And uh, your least performing upside is basically those who have survived because there's no surprises to be right 